Okay, so this question has the potential to become very fucking long in terms of an explanation. Uh, this is important for 2CK. If you want a high score on step one, I also recommend that you know the high yield points I'm about to explain. Um, because there's so much to talk about, I'm just going to come out with a blanket uh, bottom line point that you need to be able to differentiate pathologic from physiologic jaundice. There's five criteria, okay? If any one of the five criteria are uh, met, then uh, we have pathologic jaundice. So number one, any jaundice present on the first day of life, pathologic, doesn't matter the cause, okay? Any jaundice present in the first 24 hours, pathologic. Number two, jaundice present after one week of term or after two weeks of preterm, okay? Term being 37 weeks or after. Number three, total bilirubin greater than 12 to 15 milligrams per deciliter. Literature says different ranges. USMLE is never going to give you a value in the middle. They'll make it like 18, okay, if they want pathologic. But total bilirubin greater than 12 to 15 milligrams per deciliter, pathologic. Number four, conjugated bilirubin or direct bilirubin greater than 10% of total, even if total is under 12 to 15. And then number five, and this is the one every student forgets, is a rate of change of increase greater than 0 0.5 milligrams per deciliter per hour, not five, 0 0.5, okay? Sometimes a PEDS question might give you two columns. They'll say the neonate at 12 hours, the neonate at 36 hours as an example. So uh, now that we know the five criteria for pathologic jaundice, why don't we look at the question here? So we have a five-day-old neonate born at 38 weeks gestation, RH negative mom, G1, P1, and she's jaundiced for, she's got yellow skin for the past 12 hours. The mom reports difficulty breastfeeding, difficulty with attachment of the baby to the breast, and then we have a bunch of hematologic parameters. So why don't we look at our bilirubin first? Total bilirubin, 11 milligrams per deciliter. Okay, well that's under 12 to 15, so that's not pathologic. So, so far, so good. Then we look at our direct or conjugated bilirubin, 0 0.9 milligrams per deciliter. Well, that's under 10% of total, isn't it? Because 10% uh, of total should be 1.1. So that's also so far so good. And then we say, well, what about the, the timing of uh, the age of the uni? Five days, five days old, born at term. So that's not after one week of term. So, so far so good for three of the criteria. This isn't jaundice on the first day of life, clearly. There's no mention of that. So that's four criteria. And then there's nothing mentioned in the question about rate of change of increase. Uh, and for that matter, we're greater than 0 0.5 milligrams per deciliter per hour. So that's five criteria we just discussed um, and none of them are met. So this is physiologic jaundice. And that's our answer here. And I'm going to discuss other high yield points you need to know, very consolidated, as I said. But just as one example, this is what 2CK will do is they'll give you, it's like, oh, wow, kid has difficulty breastfeeding. There's decreased attachment, poor attachment. It's like, it must be breastfeeding jaundice. It's not fucking breastfeeding jaundice. This is physiologic jaundice because we just went through the criteria. Okay. It's not hard, but this is what you've got to do for 2CK. And if you know you want a good score on step one and they happen to give you a question like this, you get your 276. So we look at our answers here, breastfeeding versus breast milk jaundice. Breastfeeding jaundice usually starts in the first week of life. You need adequate breastfeeding for, you need breast milk to flush the bilirubin through the small bowel. So if you have poor breastfeeding, decreased intake of breast milk, there's increased enterohepatic circulation of bilirubin leading to jaundice, okay? Breast milk, and uh, the treatment for that would be uh, promote adequate feeding through education for the mom on breastfeeding methods and uh, formula if necessary. Breast milk jaundice, this is actually benign despite the fact that it's uh, pathologic. Um, Breast milk jaundice, it, it will start three to five days and peak at two weeks. And it's actually caused by an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase within breast milk, which will deconjugate bilirubin and cause increased, cause increased enterohepatic circulation, okay? And you actually just continue breastfeeding. But the reason it's not the answer, e even if they um, give you a vignette where you're thinking breast milk jaundice could potentially be the answer, if all five criteria are met for physiologic jaundice, you're still just going to choose physiologic jaundice. That's why this answer is, uh, this question in particular is very clean cut. Now we look at the hemolytic diseases of the newborn. I'll explain these quickly, uh, the high yield points for you. RH in particular, very high yield. 
you're going to have uh, a second pregnancy or later. You clearly have a first pregnancy here, so making it impossible as an answer. If you're going to have a second pregnancy or later, it's because you're going to have an RH negative mom, you're going to have an RH positive fetus in the first pregnancy where there's mixing, inadvertent mixing of the circulations for whatever reason, and the moms can develop IgG antibodies against RH uh, antigen that in a subsequent pregnancy will cross the placenta and attack the fetal RBCs, okay? So uh, Rho gam, it's important to give if you have an RH negative mom, um, but this will only occur in a second pregnancy or later. ABO type is quite weird. Uh, this is uh, more important for 2CK. I don't think I've seen this on a step one level question, but your the vignette will be an O positive mom, so there's no confusion. They'll give you an O positive mom, and they're gonna give you a fetus who's A or B. And when we have antibodies against an opposing blood type, if I have, if I, I'm A positive, which means I have antibodies against B blood. So those antibodies are primarily going to be IgM, okay? But for whatever reason, in patients who are O, a greater fraction can be IgG. And in pregnant women, those IgG antibodies against A or B can cross the placenta, and they can cause varying degrees of hemolysis based on the percentage that the mom has that are IgG. Uh, so... Uh, as I said, they will give you, if they want ABO type, they'll give you a first pregnancy. They'll say the mom's O positive, and they'll, they'll tell you the fetus is A or B uh, based on fetal cord sampling or however they determine that. Okay, so our short recapitulation here. Our five criteria for pathologic jaundice, you have any one of the five, you're pathologic. Number one, we said uh, total bilirubin greater than 12 to 15 uh, milligrams per deciliter. Number two, we have direct bilirubin greater than 10% of total, even if total is under 12 to 15. Uh, number three, jaundice present on the first day of life, any cause. Number four, jaundice present after one week of term or after two weeks of preterm. And number five, a rate of change of increase greater than 0 0.5 milligrams per deciliter per hour, okay? And if you're under those thresholds, for uh, if you're under all five of those thresholds, you're physiologic, okay? As I said, this can be a long clip. Um, because there's a lot to discuss, and I'll obviously make more content. So if you liked my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.